And on the line with us this morning is Lisa Spencer from the Department of Human Services, brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. We've been talking with Lisa each Friday about the ERAP program. And uh, just to reintroduce the program, Lisa, for folks who uh, are new to this conversation and really need to hear this information, or they've heard it before and it hasn't really registered with them, this is a great program. So uh, why don't you give us the thumbnail on what the ERAP program is and what it means for Indiana County residents. Okay, great. Good morning, Todd. Uh, So ERAP is the Emergency Rental Slash Utility Assistance Program, and this is coming down from the federal government. The Department of Treasury has sent down $25 billion across the country, and Indiana County um, has received $5.529 million uh, to help renters. This is just for renters, not homeowners, um, who may be behind on rent and or their utilities. So the program really is to get people current up back to um, up, up to date here so that they can, you know, take over and start, um, you know, paying their rent and, you know, getting back into employment. There are jobs opening everywhere. So we want to be able to help people get back up on their feet and uh, be self-sustaining from here on out. All right. So that being the basics of what's happening with the ERAP program, the deadlines, of course, uh, are in place for Indiana County to uh, distribute uh, as many funds as they can. And we're talking five and a half million dollars here. Um, So how has this past week been? Are people still responding? Has it slowed down or sped up any? No, actually, I'm pretty encouraged. Uh, Since last week, last week we reported 311 applications. This, This week we have 359. So we're up 48 applications from last week. So I do think the uh, amount of outreach that we're doing is is actually penetrating into different areas. So I'm I'm encouraged by that. So right now we have 233 of those 359. Those are pending. So that means that they're basically approved. They just need to get their information and their documentation back into ICAP so that we can move forward with uh, uh, the final approval of their applications. 41 of those have already been approved and paid out. So we're making some headway on that as well. We did have 85 so far that had to be denied. We've had 20 duplicates, 20 duplicate applications. Uh, We've had seven homeowners. We've had eight that um, application, applicants who no longer live with the landlord. We've had five that are over the 80% average median income, which is a guideline. We had one that was not a county resident. We had 27 uh, that no longer felt they needed the assistance, and we had 17 that were not COVID-related. And those are really, I think, mostly falling into um, IUP students, uh, who were possibly looking at us um, trying to help them for the fall semester. So those, those aren't really, we can't, we can't push that into that. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty encouraged that we have at least 233 pending. I would really like to see that number, you know, go down quickly. Mm-hmm. So if people who are listening today, if you're one of those pending, you know, get your information back in so we can get, get a move on this. It does take a little while to turn around the applications uh, because you do need so much documentation, but I certainly want to be able to help as many people as uh, as many people as we can before you know the end of July gets here, and then we don't seem to know right now what's going to happen with the funding uh-huh. if they take it back or not. Okay. Well, one of the things that you just mentioned is that you, if you've started that process, do be sure to follow through with your paperwork and let's get you off of the pending and onto the approved list. Meanwhile, we need to get more people on the pending list, uh, new folks uh, who uh, can qualify for this program and get the rental and uh, utility assistance that they need. So, so let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, there are folks out there I know that haven't been reached even yet. Right. I think it's just a matter of word of mouth now because it's pretty much saturated. So anybody listening right now, the easiest thing to do is to go to the WCCS website. It's front and center. And then you just click right on that and it'll take you to the landing page that will explain 
what the guidelines are and what the income guidelines are. And those are set by the federal government, so we have to, we have to follow those rules. Um, the other thing that I want to uh, talk about real quickly here is that uh, this past week people have been calling ICAP and have been um, indicating that they're having a lot of trouble accessing Compass that Compass is kind of kicking them off or it's not finishing, allowing them to finish applications, or they aren't able to uh, get the numbers that they need to have. Um, if that does happen to anybody who is trying to apply, please just call ICAP at 724-465-2657, and they will complete a paper application with um, the person on the phone, and then they can enter the information at a later time, the state was notified on Monday that we were having trouble with this, so they're actually looking into this, and we, we're not sure if that's just a URL issue for where we are or if it's affecting the Commonwealth. Yeah, so. it would be really interesting to know if other, other counties are having the same difficulty that Indiana County is. Uh, and it's probably good to point out that if this is an Indiana County-only program here. Other counties might have their own uh, programs going on, but this one is for Indiana County residents. So if you're going through ICAP, you're going through Indiana County Department of Human Services, it's because you are an Indiana County resident, right? Right. And so really what's interesting is over on the borders of the county, um, so we took the geotargeting uh, through the Renda Media campaign and with SoCast Digital, and it probably does seep over into the other counties but it's just because we wanted to make sure all the zip codes were included. Um, so if somebody does end up calling Indiana County, but technically they're Jefferson County, then ICAP will make sure to give them the information um, up to Jefferson County. We actually did have that happen. That was the one that called in Fermata County. Mm -hmm. But it would be the same for Armstrong, Westmoreland, and Cambria counties too. So, you know, it's, it's kind of tricky where those boundaries are. You know, even if they say some people are in you know, an in Indiana County, but maybe they have an Armstrong County address. Yeah. So it, it does, but we'll, you know, ICAP's very um, happy to help make sure people get to where they need to go. Yeah, absolutely. So so that's good news that uh, folks are sort of navigating their way around the system. Now, I want to talk about utility assistance in particular right now because uh, this is something, you know, people might be out there hearing rent and it'll only help me with my rent but i'm okay with my rent but this is, utilities are included in this but it's utilities for renters and that's a, an important distinction it is i think that's what's making it very confusing for the homeowners uh since we are getting um increased calls for homeowners um this this pot of money funding from the federal government is only for renters and it's only for renters um experienced uh arrears with their utility bills and so they can go back until March 13th of last year, 2020, um, to help with some of those uh, overdue uh, bills. And we know uh, for a fact that the utility companies are definitely in the arrears with many people. So we've, we've talked on your show the last couple of weeks about how far PA American Water is, over half a million dollars, $560,000 behind just in Indiana County. Yeah. Now we know most, you know, most of those are going to be homeowners just because we have more homeowners than we do renters. But if there are renters in that group, then those renters should be calling to see if they can, you know, get some assistance to help pull that water bill up to date. And if the water bill is behind, then we're probably looking at the electric bills, the gas bills, and other uh, kind of uh bills being behind as well. So it's really critical right now. This is the best opportunity people are going to have to be able to get their uh, rent and utilities current. All right. Absolutely. Uh, this And, and you're right. Uh, we need to think about rent. Uh, we need to think about uh, the, the right utilities, water, sewage, uh, electricity, those sorts of things, your gas bill. Those are all eligible, not phones, but everything else. Right, just telecommunications is not included in this, and again, that came down from the federal government about what can and cannot be applied into the situation. But my suggestion is anybody who is listening to this today or knows anybody who's listening to this, 
um, today, um, please, you know, talk to someone and tell them to call ICAP to see if they can, you know, in fact be eligible for this, this funding because we want to be able to help as many people as we can, and we really need a community effort to keep pushing this word around. So I really do appreciate all the work that um, we're doing, uh, my staff, ICAP's doing, and uh, Brenda broadcast, uh, Broadcasting, how, they, how much they've helped us get the word out. And we just need to keep pushing it out so that we can really, you know, affect change in Indiana County here Absolutely. and help people. All right, Lynn, um, uh, Lisa, one more time with the phone number for ICAP. It is 724-465-2657. And they are ready and waiting to take your phone calls. Thank you so much, Lisa. Have a great weekend. Okay, you too. I'll see you next Friday. Okay, take care, Friday. Okay, take care.